Hey guys, Mr. B here, and uh, bring you another little exciting video. Um, hopefully that recorded the first little part of my computer. It's been all kind of weird today. Um, so yeah, one of the outcomes in 3205 is uh, creating the equation of a quadratic. So if you are a 3204 student, you may go to the next video. Um, but yeah, so here basically we have a a some points about quadratic function, or could be a quadratic sequence that you're trying to find. And we are asked to find basically either the general term or the equation. Okay, both very similar. Um, so we have to use what we know about quadratics and a little bit of our, you know, a little bit of algebra to be able to solve this guy. All right. So the first thing we got to remember when uh, we're talking about a quadratic is how to find a leading term. It's actually um, a very important process, and it's actually not that hard to be able to find a leading term of a quadratic. What we need to know is that d2 is equal to 2. A. So basically what that means, if A is a leading term, then um, if we can find the second level difference, whatever that second level difference is, if we divide it by uh, 2, we can find our um, leading coefficient. In, in this case, we're talking about a leading coefficient. We're talking about um, height and time here, just a random example. So H of T is equal to A T squared plus B T plus c. So what we're looking for is the c, b, and a. We're looking for the three coefficients of the quadratic, and our leading coefficient is a, right? We get that from the second level difference. So let's start by finding our second level difference. So we go 24.1, subtract 3 is 21.1. Subtract 24.1, that's equal to 11.3. And then we have 36.9, subtract 35.4, that's equal to 1.5. And then we got 28.9, subtract 36.9, or sorry, 28.6, so that's negative 8.3. And then our last one is 10.5, subtract 28.6, and we end up with negative 18.1. All right, so this is our this is what we would call our first level difference, and it's not constant. Uh, so hopefully we'll find something constant with the next one. We'll do the same thing again. So we go 11.3, subtract 31.1, and we get negative 19.8. We go 1.5, subtract 11.3, and we get Negative 9 point, so something's going on here. Oh, I see the mistake. That should be 21. Well, now, that, that's a problem, isn't it? That will help us out. So that's uh, 21. That's negative 9.8. This guy's negative 9.8. I thought I was going to have to start the video over again to find a new problem. Negative 9, uh, 8.3. Uh, subtract 1.5. So again, you see the pattern. Negative 9.8. And then negative 9.8. All right, so this is our D2, all right? It's equal to negative 9.8. So we're going to use this fact. D2 is equal to 2A. Well, D2 is equal to negative 9.8, which is equal to 2A. Or A is equal to negative 9.8 divided by 2. And we get negative 4.9. So that's my A value. So that's really the first important step in this guy. So A is equal to negative 4.9. Right here. Um, so now we got to find, concentrate on finding B or C. Well, actually, if you're ever given this guy a point where T is equal to 0 or whatever it might be, it could be X. Um, time is equal to zero. The independent variable is equal to zero. Um, we already know one of the one of the points. We actually know c. Or sorry, one of the coefficients c. So actually, because we have t is equal to zero, what happens to our if we have h t is equal to zero? Well, look what happens. This thing is zero. This thing is zero, and we're left with c. All right, h of zero or h when t is zero is equal to c, which means it's equal to three is this, this guy right here, okay? Because C is technically our, our you know, our Y 
intercept, right, of the quad for the quadratic. So c is equal to three. So that's our uh, second guy, our second uh, coefficient. So now what we can do is actually um, take our h t and sub in what we know. So we know it's negative uh, four. Let's see. Let me erase that so I can. Negative 4.8 uh, t squared. I don't know what b is yet, so pt plus 3, my c value. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point that's easy to use. So, I mean, there's not really anything here that's really that Fenry. I'll probably pick this guy. 1 at 21.4. So t is 1. So uh, my h t is 24.1. That's going to be equal to 4.8. 8, negative 4.8, 1 squared, plus b times 1, plus c. So the only guy that we don't know here is b, okay? So what I'm going to end up doing is just basically work this down a little bit. So I end up with 24.1, that's going to be equal to negative 4. I'm not having a good time with this today. Uh, negative 4.8. 1 squared is just 1 times 1, and then I just left with b here, then plus 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to combine my like terms here a little bit, and then uh, try and simplify it down a little bit more, and see if I can't solve for b. That's what you really want to end up with here, okay? So if I combine these two, a negative 4.8 plus 3, it's going to leave me with 24.1 is equal to negative 1.8 plus b. I'll take this across to the other side, it becomes positive. And I'll add 1.8 to both sides, whatever you want to think of it as. Plus b. So my b is going to be equal to 24.1 plus 1.8. And I'm left with 25.9. Alrighty, so I got 25.9. So I have my a, my b, and my c. So now all I do is go back to this guy and fill in where b is too. So h and t is equal to negative 4.8 t squared plus 25.9 t plus 3. And there we go. That's our answer. Alrighty. Um, so again, guys, these are pretty important pro problems for 3205 students, so I'd recommend practicing a bunch. I've given you some. And uh, when we review for our unit test for this unit, I hope you guys pay attention, particular attention to this type of problem. All right, guys, uh, good luck with your studying. I'll see you in class.